My name is Celia Euler, and I'm a professor at Teachers College, and I think I was put at the end to kind of bring in as the closer, and it's a very tough act to follow. Um, up here on the stage are some very well-respected people in the city and in the state and even in the country who are trying to bring a voice of reason to what is just a creeping, growing monstrosity of insanity. Um, Liz Phillips, thank you so much for your really courageous letters that buoy my spirit. Some days I think I can't stay in education. Uh, I've been a teacher for 36 years, 15 of the years, first years were in public schools as a um, special educator and then an inclusive educator. And I work with preparing student teachers uh, in a whole year long student teaching experience at Teachers College. Hello to all the graduates in the audience. And some of the uh, student teachers are at PS321 and at 24, and we really value our partnerships. And so I'm spending a lot of time in schools all the time, and I hear what teachers are going through, and I see what children are going through. And I was just having nightmares all of August. What was I going to say to the brand new student teachers this year? Because usually I say, welcome to the most amazing profession in the world, the one that I thought I could never do anything other than. I want to start by telling you about Debbie Smith, my fourth grade teacher, who made me want to be a teacher because she made the world come alive. Um, it was from Debbie Smith that I learned about apartheid in South Africa. Um, so we all have stories, and the student teachers start with their stories about the teachers that made the biggest difference for them. And that love of learning that we've heard about here tonight has been, um, is being crushed by a corporate school reform. It was named here as corporate school reform. And so I'm sure a lot of you are in the audience saying, how did we get to this place so quickly? Some of us at the university level will email the latest atrocity that's being done in the name of like science and math, right? They say this is, we're, we want evidence-based education. The school reform is evidence-based. That's what they're asking people to do. Yet there's counter evidence to all of the reforms that are being laid out. We have psychometricians, the people who help make tests and understand the science of tests, who disavow themselves from where this has gone, 100%. They're writing these very big rebuttals of what's happening, particularly with test construction and most significantly with value added. You've, I don't know if, how many of you understand the value added model that was referred to with the teacher data reports, but it's, it's incredibly invalid because it, it's based on tests that are not supposed to be, you're not measuring teacher effectiveness, you're supposed to be measuring student achievement. Um, but it's also highly unreliable. The wild fluctuations, the instability. So it's like, how did we get to this place that Pearson for-profit corporation has a $32 million contract with New York State for very flawed instruments that don't even meet the standards of the American Psychological Association. <laughs> we have in New York State Regents Fellows a bevy of young people without experience as teachers or educators or principals who have been charged with making policy for the state. They are paid for with private money. Merrill Tisch gave up the first million dollars and then other companies have been paying for them. They have displaced the state ed workers in Albany. State ed workers, the professionals who've been there for 20 some years, have moved out of their offices into trailers where these young lawyers and economists are running models that are making life here untenable for children and for teachers. How much more insanity can we take? You know, you open the newspaper and read um, editorials written by corporate 
Business Roundtable funded think tanks, right? How did we get here? Business Roundtable, New School Venture Fund, and they took NCLB took ESEA, the Education Secondary Elementary Act, that used to try to equalize some funding in this country for the disproportional amounts we pay, right? You know how many countries in the world spend more money on rich kids' education than poor children's? Three, the United States, Turkey, and Israel, right? So in the United States, we spend sometimes two and three times as much money on the education of high-income children versus low-income children. Um, so the Business Roundtable, New School Venture Fund, there is a lot of money to be made here, right? And some people are looking at how we can follow the money trail to the privatization of schools. Right, what else is the agenda here? So they took ESEA funding that was supposed to equalize and they destroyed that with race to the top funding that said the, the better your district is doing on these measures, the more money you'll get. So, so much for education as the place where democracy is taking place, right? Instead, what we have is a system designed to sort people into their proper categories, and it's working very well. New York State has now taken up the ed TPA, which is a high stakes test for teachers, which is videotape. So student teachers videotape themselves teaching and upload them into a computer with about 50 pages of typing around it. And a teacher sitting at a terminal somewhere in the world um, for $75 decides if they get certified in New York State or not. It gets read by one person, the student teacher pays $300, Pearson pays the rater $75. At the same time that's happening, the New York State Board of Regents decoupled teacher education from university-based preparation. So you no longer have to go to get a bachelor's degree or a, a master's degree in education to be permanently certified to, at a university. You can go to a place like Relay Graduate School where they promise to have 10,000 students in the next few years and the way they get their master's degree is if they raise student test scores by one grade level then the, the student teacher is given master's degree from New York State and certification from New York State from the Board of Regents directly. They have promised to scale up that model to the rest of the United States. It's called the GRADE Act. And so you'll see in the next few years academies after academies after academies that are going to be um, built up to do teacher training. I think the most important thing to end with is one simple idea, and that is we do have a problem in this country of unequal access to quality education. There is no doubt about that, and we're, it's essential that we talk about the effects of poverty and of racism on what happens in schools. That is a conversation that must be held. The conversation has been framed about the achievement gap. So the entire metric that we've been using is around so-called achievement. Learning is what we must claim. We must reclaim the essential love of learning that can only happen with inspired teaching. And with high stakes tests for teachers and high stakes tests for children, the love of learning is what is being squished. And we, especially you, parents, are the only mechanism by which we will fight this because it's big. It's also really important to understand that New York State has taken up this work on steroids. Mm -hmm. 
So New York State, everyone's looking at what we do in New York State to see if we can fight back. And I don't know if you've seen any of the videos of parents upstate who are talking back to John King, but they're very inspiring. So I say that the time is now, and we're not just doing it for our own children and our own careers, we're doing it for children and teachers across the United States.